Hey guys. Hey, I just wanted to update you on what I've been doing or what I've been trying to do. Anyway, I've been trying to figure out how, because I mean, I could read the book, but the problem with that is that we don't know who these people are. So trying to figure out who they are. So what I tried to do is I tried to start writing down information. And then I kept finding other people and information. And then I was trying to build a chain up from me going up the line. Trying to figure out to go as far as that I could possibly go. Which I made it to here. And found, and then, okay, so, the well-dressed woman, I can't pronounce her name, is called, what's her name? Oh, Min, uh, how, ho, whiska, whiska? Oh, Minna, how, whiskia? I don't know, bird. Mary Ann. That, that, oh, Minna, how, whiskia, is called. Her name is actually, in English, called Well-Dressed Woman. Okay, so that's my great-great-great-grandmother, either times five or six. Haven't figured that part out yet. But she was the mother of, like, Jimmy Jock and Chloe Bird, George Bird, Lydia. Okay, so those three, Chloe, Jimmy Jock, and Lydia, and either one, this Elizabeth... Or this Elizabeth. I don't know. I have to figure out which Elizabeth. Um, or there's also Elizabeth up here. Because there's like four or five Elizabeths. So I have to separate who they are. Figure out. And then I decided what I'm going to do is go with her husband. My great great grandmother's husband. Because he came from England. And that's the first white line that I can find and so I'm going to start there and then go to the Cree so I figured what I would do is I'd start out with researching okay his name was James Curtis Bird and I started writing down his story you know who he was married to his parents when he died and he started working for the Hudson Bay Company but then I figured out I'm gonna have to start with the Hudson Bay Company and how the Hudson Bay Company and the Swampy Cree met. And then that's when James Bird comes in and then he marries the well-dressed woman from the Swampy Cree tribe and then they end up having a bunch of children and then it comes all the way down the line and then this book meets into that. Sorry that there's a mess on my table. I got fruits and stuff. Because I've been snacking while I'm doing it. But anyway, that's how I'm going to have to do it. So I'm going to... I started filling out the James part. Because I was going to start with him. But now I have to go back and I have to start with the Hudson Bay Company. And how the Swampy Cree Indians. How they met. How that came about. Because James starts working for the Hudson Bay. And then he has a son named Jimmy Jock. Which is James Jimmy Jock Bird. And he's like a Indian, a famous Indian for the Cree and Blackfeet. And he spoke eight languages. So it's really important that we switch back to him. Because he's basically how the information flowed. Because he had the ability... To go back and forth and talk to everybody. And then I figured we would do this book. And then Jimmy Jock wrote one or two books. So I'm going to try to order his books. And then supposedly there's a book by Ma by a girl named Maggie Jock. And I have to figure out how she... If she is maybe one of Jimmy Jock's daughters or wives. Because I can't find her yet. Because I'm not searching for that. I'm only looking for 
James Curtis Bird's kids, which Jimmy Jock is his, it, some sites say it's his third kid, but from what I find, it's his second kid, his second son. They list him as third son or third child, but I think it's his second son. George is first, then Jimmy Jock, but before that, before he even had kids or sometime in the time frame when Jimmy Jock was an infant, he adopted a girl named Margaret Hourly. Her parents are unknown. Her father was listed as a Cree. Mother was listed as unknown. And James Curtis Bird and the well-dressed woman ended up adopting this girl. And she was 12 years old. She lived with them until she was 22 where she then married, I forgot to, I didn't write down his name, but she got married and moved out when she was 22, and I figured I would probably do like a little bit on each one of these siblings of Jimmy Jocks. Chloe died when she was 27. They had it listed as she was 21, but the deeper I dig the more I, I find that, especially that wiki uh, genealogy ancestry is pretty much inaccurate on almost everything. How I'm getting accurate stuff is I look for a gravestone. I look online for an actual picture or photo of the gravestone or the cemetery because then you can Google map, walk it, and zoom in and find you know or listings and stuff like that is how I've got photos and then what I'm going to do is do the video and then whoever I do the video of if I can get a photo of their gravestone either offline or screenshot it from Google Maps that way we have the actual dates and we can piece it together and I'm going to do a timeline on each one of them so that way we can kind of look at the time frame what was going on in the world during that time why they chose to be where they were because nobody stayed with the swampy cree all of these people left except for maybe peter who has or no philip whose name is pi axiwa I don't know where he went. He might have went with another tribe. But a lot of these either left, went to different areas. A lot of these people. Some traveled to California. Some Oregon. Some Washington. Some Indiana. Like they, they scattered. They were considered half-breeds though. They were half-white, half-Cree. But they spoke English, French, and Cree. So all of them spoke three languages except for maybe Harriet Isabella because she died when she was one. So, you know, all the rest of them. Anyway, I'm just updating you on what I was doing and why it's, why I haven't posted any videos. The weather's been e. Eh. This is the weather right now, just so you know. It's snowing. Anyway, so I'm going to get back to trying to do a timeline so I can put together something. Maybe I can print off some photos that I find online. There is no photos of the well-dressed woman because photography didn't wasn't invented until almost 20 years after she died. I looked it up. They have like some crazy photo for her, but it's not her. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.